Okay, good morning. My name's Dave and we're here today to give you a little quick introductory on the different controls, handles, knobs, buttons on your granite machines. The controls are sort of grouped together. Right here you have the controls for your electronics, your motor, your speed, your on off. Up here you have your controls for your mill. And along here you have the controls for the lathe. To begin to start up, let's say we're going to start up our lathe. Okay, let's show you how to start the lathe. First thing we're going to do, we're going to take our selector up here. We're going to move it over to where it shows the lathe. It does help to turn the chuck a little bit when you're trying to get these things engaged. So now we should have power to our lathe. Let's push our start button. Turn the speed dial up. And there we have our lathe. Now this is a variable speed machine. You can control your spindle speed right here by the electronic dial. You can also control the spindle direction. Let's shut it off, raise the little yellow button, flip it down. Now, when you watch the lathe chuck, you'll see it's going to turn in the opposite direction. So you, besides the variable speed, you have the versatility of running either way. You have an emergency stop by pushing the red button. Now, now we want to look at the manual controls for the lathe. The lathe has movement in two directions. This direction, which is lateral, and this direction here, which we call the long feed or the longitudinal. Uh, our feed here is very simple. It's just a crank right here on the table. The dial down here is laid out to where each revolution of this, one full revolution, is one-tenth of an inch. Okay. Each division down here is one one-thousandth of an inch. Now, on the table, that's the only movement you have manually. But on this direction, okay, you have a handle here, which moves it very quickly. This handle is basically for positioning. This will have a lot of slop in here. It's a rapid feed handle. It's made to get your table from one place to another in a hurry. To move your table in a precision manner, this is called the half nut lever. You put it down. Here on the end, you have another crank. This crank and dial is calibrated just like this one here. One revolution is a tenth of an inch. Each division is one one thousandth of an inch. So you have a very precision movement in either direction here. This is how you get your precision for your cutting. This is how you get it somewhere in a hurry so you can begin your work. Now let's look at the manual controls for the mill head. Okay, now your mill drill head, and it's called mill drill head because you can operate it as a drill press. You see here? This moves up and down just like a drill press would, but that's not precision enough for milling. Okay. Let's come in here and push this in. Okay. Wait a little, little bit, there we go. Now you see I can't move it as a drill press, but here's my control for milling. Again, a dial that's very precise for feeding down, feeding up. You also have, when you get to the position you want it in, on the back here, you have a locking lever. If you turn that lever, that locks this spindle. It cannot move up or down. It's locked into place for precision milling. Over here on your mill head, you have a couple of locks. And you have a crank handle that comes with it. Let's unlock these here. See what happens. Okay. With these unlocked, Notice you have a dial here. This crank fits on here and lets you raise the mill head. When you've got those taller pieces that won't quite fit in, you can raise it up to get more capacity out of your mill. And if you're using the lathe and not the mill, it's really convenient just to swing it out of your way like that. When you want to use your mill again, 
let's say this is the right height. We come into these locks and give them a good snug pull on that crank handle. And now your mill head is locked into place. Okay, your basic controls on your tailstock. You have a lock here in the back, which will allow you to lock it into place anywhere along the bed of the machine. You have a calibrated dial for advancing or retracting the barrel of the tailstock. And you have a lock here that will lock this barrel into position. Here's a little extra tip. This is a valuable tool in your shop to get in them hard to reach places to get those chips off your machine and keep it nice and clean. Okay, the machine is run by a belt that runs between the motor and the spindle. And there's a couple different belt positions, but first let me show you how to untension the belt. You've got a lever right here. If you watch the motor closely, you see how it moves upward now? That, when we get inside the pulley box, you'll see, takes the tension off that belt so it can be removed to replace the belt or to move it to another speed setting. And then move it right back up like this, and that applies the tension right back to the belt. Okay. If you open the pulley box here on the end, you notice we have some gears in here, we have a belt. The belt allows us to use both of these speed ranges you see on the dial. When I showed you the belt tension, if you watch from the inside, you see how that pulley moves up? Now, right now, we're on the big pulley here and the small one at the top. That's our high speed. If we want to go to the little lower speed, we just slide this back here, move it to the big one on the top, come out, set our tension, and we move from the high speed range to the low speed range. Now, later when we get into feed rates and threading. We'll talk about the different gears on the machine. There's some extra gears that come with it for cutting metric threads. But uh, for general work, any inch thread or any of your feeds for your mill or your lathe can be done with the gears that come on the machine from the factory. The extra gears are strictly for cutting metric threads. Hey, now that we've looked at the manual controls, let's take a look at the power feed. You have first a selector here that says lathe and mill. If you're running your mill and you want power feed, you have it in the mill position. If you're running your lathe and you want power feed, bring this over to the lathe. Again, sometimes it helps to spin the chuck a little bit by hand to get those to, to mesh right. Here you have a selector that tells you which way is my power feed going to turn. You have a clockwise, a counterclockwise, and a neutral. So let's turn the machine on here. Oh, we forgot something. Down here, this is a box that tells us how fast this feed is going to move. On some cuts, we want to move faster. On something like threading, we want to move uh, really fast. Find things, we want to move slower. So let's, let's just put this in number seven. And let's go all the way over here to number two. Okay, we'll just pick those randomly here this morning. We'll turn the machine on. Bring it up to speed here a little bit. Oops, it's not turning. We're in neutral. Let's stop it. Look at this. Now our feed rod is turning. You see the direction it's turning? Okay, let's stop it for a minute bring this up. Now we're turning the other way. This allows you to feed away from the chuck or towards the chuck. These allow you to feed at different rates. Now there's a section in the manual that shows all the different feed rates and cutting speeds. But here, we're going to put this here on about 150. You see how fast that's moving? Now let's try something. Let's turn it off. Let's move it up to number one. You can turn this little chrome knob to help line things up. It's right there on the side. Now I'm going to start it up at the same speed. And I want you to notice, see how much faster it's turning? We've gone from the slowest speed 
to the fastest speed. And, and there's numerous speeds in between using this selector in combination with this one. Now I have our selector over here set for a very slow speed on this. I want to show you the controls that actually will engage these mechanisms to the speed drop. Right here you have a lever. Let's see what happens when we move it up. You notice we're feeding up here. And right now we're feeding this way. If we want to feed in the opposite direction, let's just flip this off briefly, change our direction right here, turn it back on, and now we're feeding in the other direction. So you can feed this way or this way by the use of this lever right here. Now, let's stop the power feed on this axis. Let's push down on it. Now you notice this wheel's moving in. It's moving fairly slowly because I've got it on a slow rate, but we're feeding in towards the chuck. If we want to feed that way, we turn it off and move this selector again. This is your feeds for cutting, whether you're using the lathe or the mill. Now you have one other type of feeding, and that is for threading. Now threading is going to move much faster, so we need a completely different lever. I'm going to bring this down here, away from the chuck, and this is called our half nut. When we engage this, see how much faster it moves across the workpiece? This is what we use for our thread cutting. Bring it up to stop it. So you've got two ways of cutting. You've got your half nut, which moves it quickly for threading. You've got your lever here, your power feed selector, which moves it at a slow pace for general cutting. Hey, thank you for watching our video here on uh, the introduction to the controls on a granite machine. Again, my name is Dave. If there's questions you have about your machine that weren't answered by this video, please feel free to give us a call at 800-476-4849. Thank you very much and good day.